फिलोसफी इज ए हाफ साइंस कैसाई साइंस और हाफ साइंस और क्वासी साइंस द फर्स्ट पार्ट ऑफ ज्योग्राफी विल बी द फिजिकल पार्ट एंड सेकेंड विल बी द ह्यूमन एंड इकोनॉमिक पार्ट सो इन द फर्स्ट पार्ट वी यूज द एलिमेंट्री फिजिक्स द एलिमेंट्री बायो केमिस्ट्री द एलिमेंट्री सॉयल प्लांट रिसर्च वर्कस एंड एंड द डिस्कवरीज द लॉज geology in some part meteorology in some parts so physical part of geography will be science or really in the real sense scientific so first part is scientific second part is human and economic geography so that part will be like an arts now uh, even though we deal with the arts part like the human geography economic geography political geography agriculture geography regional development planning so all these parts also involve theoretical constructs and laws and paradigms and and uh, uh, the research works the quantification works so uh, second part also becomes very objectified and very theoretical sometimes and second part also has to be substantiated with the graphs the flow charts the diagrams the map the presentation and the first part of course is based on graph and diagrams and presentation and the maps and the and all those caricatures which we do in in part 1 so geography has two parts and both requires a lot of graphical work now the term geography itself means geo plus graphy the study of earth in graphics nahi we don't use lozy lozy meaning science so so whatever scientific knowledge we gain from geology or from sociology or from for that matter any other arts or science subject it has to be integrated and then presented diagrammatically that becomes geography i hope you understood meaning any answer writing in geography has to incorporate lots of diagrams and i mean it until you have the high capability of drawing diagrams and presenting geographical facts through certain mathematical techniques and incorporating the theoretical parts the laws which have been discovered by geographers whether it is any human phenomena or physical phenomena when i say physical phenomena it means rainfall so why it rains there is a theory behind it there is a law behind it there is a natural law behind it now why human migrations are taking place even there is a law even there exist a law human migrations are not taking place randomly or there has to be some law some inherent law which governs migration of people why delhi as a mega city is attracting people from uttar pradesh and bihar why mumbai is attracting you know the labor force from uttar pradesh and odisha etc so there is a law of migration also so not only in human geography but also uh, not only in physical geography but also in human geography we make it very scientific and we present our geography through graphics so please catch this term if you want to score very good marks the first thing you have to learn is that you have to present your knowledge with the help of graphics and maps if it goes well within your head then i can put the second point so please write whether you learned this or not i give a very terse statement a very short statement that our geography has to be our geography has to be uh, presented with the power of diagrams with the power of maps with the power of tables flow charts pie diagrams wheel maps there are innumerable unquantifiable techniques which can be used in geography even a small caricature helps so i hope that you learn this second thing you want to a score in geography use the language of geography you cannot write the language of shakespeare in geography geography has its own vocabulary geography is the mother of all sciences is the mother of all arts i am serious about it immanuel kant in the 17th century has stated he has made this statement he has written in his uh, in his work cosmos that geography is the mother of all knowledges and all the knowledges all the precarious fields of studies they all will converge 
into a pool and that pool that reservoir of knowledge is geography so when you learn geography when you, when you have become decided to be a student of geography you also need to understand that your head has to be a reservoir so here is your reservoir and you have to put all the different streams of knowledge into it different uh, rivers of knowledge is pouring pouring into even a small drains even even nanotechnology understanding of nanotechnology can help you becoming a good geographer so a geographer is one who is jack of all master of none who is a geographer what is the best definition of a geographer he is jack of all and master of none mujhe hi dekho i am jack of all if you want to discuss me sigmund freud psychology we can do it i can talk about his libido theory if you want to discuss with me sociology no issues if you want to discuss politics yes i can do it but i mean you don't have to be an specialist in any branch of knowledge you have to be a generalist not journalist generalist in all the fields of knowledge is so geographer is one who knows everything but not their specifications he is a true geographer now who is a uh, other point in geography is that geographer is one who can link who can link the subjects i can link climatic phenomena with agriculture and cropping pattern and so even the soil and the soil type and the uh, and the and what and the drainage pattern or the vegetation type can be linked with the cropping pattern so geographer is one who is drawing linkages meaning in answer writing you have to keep uh, three things in your mind a you have to draw a lot of map and diagrams and geography has to be presented through diagrams and second geography has its own language geography has its own vocabulary we don't call it surface of the earth we don't call it uh, the area we call it landscape and this this what will beautify your answer so once we don't call it uh, a uh, uh, slope we call it uh, we call it the precipitated slope precipitated slope we call it gradient we call it gradient we use slope also but we call it gradient so our our uh, vocabulary is distinct from the common usages and the common parlance we don't use the language of newspaper newspapers can enrich us i'm not denying this fact they can enrich us they always enrich our knowledge but geographical books and geographical dictionaries will help you more and my lectures will help you more when when i dictate sometimes so be careful that you are learning not only the language of geography not only the concept of geography but also the language of geography so please i said uh, a geography has to be presented uh, through maps and diagrams the neville sco b the language has to be geographical vocabulary has to be drawn from the dictionary of geography and third geographer is one who can integrate things who can who can uh, uh, link things and who can seek the functional and genetic linkages between different phenomena i said functional and genetic connection between phenomena or linkages between phenomena there is a plant it has its functional and genetic linkages with the soil and soil has has its functional and genetic relationship with the climate and the rock system and the rock system has its functional and genetic connection with the maybe the geomorphic processes which have operated there maybe the volcanic processes or the or the exogenetic forces the petrification of the rocks you know so there is a strong linkages between the biotic and the abiotic right the crop has its link with soil soil has link with climate and the rock system and the climate has its link with ocean right and ocean again we can be linked with geology there is a, look look at this those are linkages this is what geography does so as a geographer you become a person who who actually genetically comprehends 
the functionality of phenomena this will be very tough for a newcomer having this language in the first class itself but watch this video one or two or three times you keep uh, the right of uh, watching this video at least five times not share with your friends <clears throat> so uh, let me simplify you want to a score in geography so the criteria number one is uh, diagrams map flow chart and the unique presentation of your answer through a small paragraphs and then you have to present your diagram maybe if this is your answer sheet so let me do little more elaboration on answer writing so this is your answer sheet so you start you started writing in this fashion and suddenly you need a diagram to be to be quoted here to be depicted here so your diagram should come to me it should come in a corner and then you just keep writing this is your diagram one and this is your writing part keep writing keep writing in a flow and if you find something which has to be highlighted you can highlight you can highlight you can highlight like this you can highlight kahin kahin pe different colors you can highlight you can highlight how to highlight what all to be highlighted i will take up some time not today now so you have to continue to write in this fashion and then the second diagram can be placed here or maybe a chart or whatever but if any diagram like a world map if it requires more horizontal length than the vertical length you have to see that the diagram डिमांड्स द वर्टिकल लेंथ वर्टिकल कॉलम में ज्यादा प्रेजेंटेशन अच्छा लगेगा या हॉरिजोंटल कॉलम में लगेगा से देर इज एन इंडिया मैप सो इट नीड्स वर्टिकल प्रेजेंटेशन एंड से इट इज ए वर्ल्ड मैप इट नीड्स हॉरिजोंटल प्रेजेंटेशन सो इन दैट केस इन केस ऑफ हॉरिजोंटल प्रेजेंटेशन वी कैन एक्सटेंड द डायग्राम इट्स नॉट फोर्सफुल इट्स नॉट कंपल्सरी दैट यू हैव टू ड्रॉ योर डायग्राम इन ए कॉर्नर नो आई डेंट से दैट i just said based on the nature of the diagram right the geometry of the diagram so if the geometry is suggesting more horizontal length then this is your diagram this i have to present your diagram keep writing keep writing in a flow keep writing in a flow and then you find another one another diagram with maybe vertical more vertical extension so continue to uh right on your uh, right on your right and then on your left you will have diagram number 3 so this is how it will look this will look so graceful isn't it i hope all of you will agree to it this is how your presentation should be and this pre presentation to me is majestic and it will attract the attention of the examiner the old man will be so happy on your presentation your diagram drawing skills now second if you are drawing a diagram must put in the inset say you have to draw the diagram of the malabar coast and the koromandal coast so this is your say this is your malabar or now there is no need for drawing the full diagram so draw this half diagram put it inside the inset and show this is your malabar and this is your koromandal coast maybe you have to show the fishing area so show the fishing area and then in the diagram you must create another column another inset where you have to denote these symbols this is called symbolization or indexing so your diagram needs symbolization and symbolization and indexing indexing method indexing method this this what is taught in cartography so anyone who has who is a qualified geographer who has gone through the academics of geography he will always suggest to you that indexing and symbolization now people complain that there is no time for it there is no time for it there is a time for it so when you uh, do this thing uh, arrow laga karke then you write this is your malabar 
so maybe dot 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 and in a box here you can write mala bar and here you can write fishing this mala bar and this is here you're writing fishing it takes almost the same time it's your mindset it's your uh, non practiceness uh, until you practice you become a practitioner then you will find that having index uh, indexes and having symbolization is much easier and it, it will attract the you know the attention of the the faith of the uh, of the professor in you and you will look like a complete geographer samajh gaye okay because your fate is not in the hand of coaching tutors mere haath mein tumhara bhagya nahi hai your fate is in the hand of however scholar these tutors are these coaching masters are but we are not asked we are not requested we don't get a request later sir come and examine in the upsc the officials will invite the great professors from the great famed universities and these professors will be must be 55 65 in between they are aging they are growing with time they are experienced people and they need to have some real good hormones flow of good hormones within themselves so that they could get good marks so the idea is to have a clean handwriting to have a, a prolific proficient english vocabulary and then wonderful diagrams put inside the insets using one or two color pencils color pen not pencils color pen and this is the first stage first step done i hope you understood mujhe jaldi likh ke batao you understood or not anushka nutan sharma priya please write whether the first stage in answer writing comprehensively understood by my students or not someone ringing the bell who it could be in the meanwhile you can write your uh, write your response koi nahi tha no one was there okay anyway <clears throat> second stage or second step dhyan chand meena raj prachi great okay so second सेकेंड स्टेप में आते हैं फर्स्ट स्टेप इज दिस प्रेजेंटेशन पार्ट एंड ऑन प्रेजेंटेशन पार्ट आई मस्ट टेल यू दैट योर हैंड राइटिंग शुड बी लिजिबल एंड हैंड राइटिंग शुड बी ऑफ नॉट माइक्रोस्कोपिक साइज नॉट इवन वेरी बोल्ड राइटिंग सो हैंड राइटिंग शुड बी वॉट लिजिबल मीनिंग द एग्जामर कुड इजली रीड इट एंड ही डजेंट नीड द स्पेक्स एंड दो वाइटिंग ऑफ द आईज एंड डूइंग ऑल दिस so when when he has to do all this to read your words read your writing he will be irritated and good hormones will vanish life hi pura good hormones ka hai yaar once i asked my father what is life my father said hormones he is a geology professor and my age was very less 16 17 years i was full of hormones so i didn't realize that such a golden word has come which i realized when i grew with time and experiences anyways so this is your first step done how to present your diagram how uh, it can be incorporated in an answer ha ah, well 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 one more question which i get more often what to highlight and what to uh, what not to highlight so say there is an statement darwin pe ek statement le lete hain darwin was a geologist who proliferate who professed his theory in 1838 after the beagle expedition 
देर इज नथिंग टू हाईलाइट हेयर बिकॉज दैट इज नॉट द डिमांड ऑफ द क्वेश्चन दीज आर बेयर फैक्ट्स एंड मे बी इफ यू आस्क मी देर अननेसेसरी फैक्ट्स अनदर लाइन हिज थ्योरी इज सब्सिडेंस थ्योरी अरे भाई सब्सिडेंस थ्योरी ऑलरेडी इज गिवेन इन द क्वेश्चन पेपर तो देर इज नथिंग नथिंग लाइक हाईलाइटिंग द सब्सिडेंस थ्योरी नो देर इज नो नीड देन यू आर राइटिंग डार्विन्स थ्योरी has three stages stage 1 highlight no stage 1 to already highlighted hai now in stage 1 when you are writing that fringing reef are born fringing reefs are produced whatever originated aisa maan lo likh rahe ho even that is not, that is understood that fringing reef has now what to be highlighted most of the students actually go on to highlight any fact or any good word which they can produce है ना जैसे कोई कुछ लोग क्या करता है कि हिमालयन हैज सेलुब्रियस क्लाइमेट सो दे विल हाईलाइट सेलुब्रियस जस्ट बिकॉज दे थिंक दैट आई हैव रिटर्न ए ओह वंडरफुल वर्ल्ड दैट वंडरफुल वर्ल्ड दैट इज नॉट द हाईलाइट कमिंग टू द फर्स्ट एग्जांपल द प्रीवियस एग्जांपल सो व्हाट टू टू व्हाट टू बी हाईलाइटेड नाउ इन डार्विन व्हेन यू आर राइटिंग दैट द द डार्विन्स थ्योरी इज बेस्ड ऑन द आइडिया ऑफ subsidence of the island where he suggested that subsidence of the island will be the rate of subsidence of the island will be less than the rate of the vertical what a uh, vertical rise of the vertical origin of the vertical growth of the coral reef meaning here you are drawing uh, the theoretical part of the darwin's theory theoretical part aa raha hai yahan pe the theoretical part is that the rate of the subsidence of the island is less than the rate of the vertical growth of the coral reef now this has to be highlighted according to me because the whole theory of the origin of the barrier reef is based on this principle and if this principle is written in your examination then examiner will be smiling oh he knows it because for that particular line he is looking for and more often i have seen my students my own students uh others also those who join test paper and all so they all try to write beagle expedition 1842 before darwin there was a great scholar like casimo who also talked about subsidence theory so all the nonsense thing which he has incorporated which according to him are beautiful are most crucial things most uh, highlighted things mere anusar wo sab bakwas hai i hope you understood this example himalaya has salubrious climate nothing to be highlighted here acha angrezi likh ke highlight karne ki zarurat nahi hai but if you are writing himalayan climate has monsoonal impact and the and the different altitudinal zones of himalayas are having डिस्टिंग क्लाइमेटिक कंडीशन डिस्टिंग क्लाइमेटिक रिजीम ये हाईलाइट करोगे दिस इज द की टू योर राइटिंग दिस हाईलाइट ऑफ योर राइटिंग दिस दिस लाइक हाईलाइटिंग योर 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 इंटेंस इन इनर नॉलेज योर रियल अंडरस्टैंडिंग ऑफ द हिमालयन क्लाइमेट ये हाईलाइट किया जाता है आई होप यू अंडरस्टूड हाउ थिंग्स टू बी हाईलाइटेड key words nahi key points to be highlighted on which the whole answer is based wo wo highlight kiya jata hai how to present diagrams how it shall be highlighted what should be your handwriting so one part of answer writing is done right second as i have told you that must use the language of geography पॉलिटिकल ज्योग्राफी जियो मॉर्फोलॉजी इन्वायरमेंटल ज्योग्राफी सेटलमेंट ज्योग्राफी लुक एट द डिफरेंट डायमेंशंस है ना तो सेटलमेंट ज्योग्राफी विल हैव इट्स ओन सेट ऑफ वोकैबलरी सो सेटलमेंट ज्योग्राफी लैंग्वेज कैन नॉट बी रिटर्न इन वॉट इन फिजिकल ज्योग्राफी और वेन यू आर राइटिंग ऑन पॉपुलेशन और ट्राइब लैंग्वेज और वोकैबलरी अलग हो जाता है तो आपको ध्यान देना है यू हैव टू यू हैव टू रियली कंसीडर दिस फैक्ट्स लाइक डोंट मिक्सअप दिस लैंग्वेज इज ऑल वेयर फाइन
say you are writing a word landscape when you are describing the uh, describing say a phenomena in in geomorphology but when you are writing on contemporary issues and flood say say a topic is flood now in flood you can't write you should not write the landscape and all flood me to the vocabulary will change there you have to talk about maybe the slope the gradient the terrain some different words can be used there because landscape has very specific meaning landscape meaning the the surface plus the uh, the altitude the different altitudes that makes the landscape or the different landforms plus the three dimensional landforms plus the surface that makes the landscape landform plus earth surface it makes landscape a landscape refers to a particular homogeneous area where there is a uniformity in terms of landform like himalaya is a landscape himalaya has its landscape the himalayan landscape is mountainous so we call himalaya is a landscape so himalayan landscape this is how we use so every word has very specific meaning and until you understand the meaning the true meaning of these words you shall not try to write geography uh, at your will at your fancy what students are doing these days they will learn vocabulary one or two words they will pick from geomorphology and climatology they try to write it all where that's not done so please take care of that <coughs> okay then in answer writing <coughs> uh, interlinkages of things i have given you some example on the cropping pattern how to draw interlinkages and i am giving you one more example and please listen very carefully say there is a sociologist he is this is my very oft repeated example so there is a sociologist who is writing on uh, say tribe or an anthropologist who is writing on tribe so we have three people he is a geographer then there is a sociologist then there is an anthropologist and all this interestingly all these subjects will have a common topic called tribe the topic is tribe and the tribe to be discussed by three distinct scholars of different fields ab dekho kya hoga sociologist tribe ka lifestyle uska uh, backwardness poverty uska unemployment situation uska pangs of penury uska social condition uska what uska religion uska thakur worship uska naturalistic hona uska animistic hona he will go in all these dimensions nahi and so he is a sociologist isme uh, his worship he will make a study of his worship his practices maybe his economy his economy also so maybe his rituals rituals maybe his social conditions maybe his, their political organizations maybe their institutional factors maybe their uh, customs their customs lifestyle maybe their lifestyle maybe their faith belief everything about tribe he is a sociologist and he will construct theories about it now anthropologist he will straight way go into the race protostolite ka hai mongoloid race ka hai he will study the race then he will study the biological features the biological features look he has become different now some sociologist will also try to incorporate some facts of race etc they try to do it but their focal area will be all this all these key points now an anthropologist he will talk about the race the biological 
what biological features and maybe uh, his social condition he will also talk about social condition he will also talk about his backwardness and economy but his focal area will be race and this biological evolution biological features biological evolution come to a geographer he will talk about the ecology the habitat the geographical conditioning the environmental hazards and then he will talk about his race then he will also talk about all these his his customs his demography his uh, uh, political institutional social all kind of uh, uh, variables which has has to be studied for the tribes so look at a geographer a geographer is one who will take some facts from anthropology take something from sociology take something from economics and then put them under environmental condition test them under environmental condition and he is a geographer this is how we geographers vary from the other disciplines now there is a tendency among teachers and students as well that whatever they know about the physical world they consider it geography and uh, if anything to be associated with the social phenomena or the economic phenomena or the political phenomena or the institutional phenomena they simply discard it as non geography then you are doing injustice to the subject itself so please remember that geographer is one who is partly an anthropologist partly a sociologist and partly an environmentalist so environmentalism plus this social uh, social analysis socio analysis plus this anthropological analysis that is what makes a geographer a true geographer getting or not so your writing must reflect in every part of geography that you have comprehensive knowledge of the environmental surrounding the nature the habitat whether you are writing economic geography also whether you are writing human geography writing on population writing on regional development aspects say you are writing on regional development aspects and you are talking about watershed management now here is an economist or a student of economy so he will talk about the number of watersheds which are in india then he will talk about the the allocations the funding the channels the bureaucracy the how it will be executed the plan the policies how it will reach to the people we geographers will talk about what is a watershed and what how it is different from the command area and what is watershed management what are the components of watershed management so our approach will be <clears throat> as an environmentalist also as a scientist also so we are scientist we are environmentalist we are economist also then we will talk about not necessarily the allocation part but we have to talk about that how the plan will be implemented and how it economically it will benefit the people and how it will lead to the welfare of the people so that is what will make you again i am saying a good geographer and th this is how you will fetch marks any question coming on watershed you must draw the watershed and show the component of watershed say there is a question on city planning or a smart city where there is a question now on a smart city the planners have have these all those seven criteria for a smart city say seven criteria including transportation uh, communication and uh, the sewage and the and the what and what not and the uh, uh, what and the road planning and the kya tha wo sab yaar the pollution control to ye sab tha city planning a smart city ke antargat lekin as a geographer when you know that all this planning or the smart city planning has has existed in our previous theories like take example of chandigarh don't you think that chandigarh is in a smart city yes it is it has grid iron pattern now who gave this idea of grid iron pattern to so whenever the question has been uh, has been asked 
ऑन स्मार्ट सिटी इन ज्योग्राफी पेपर टू डोंट राइट फ्रॉम द गवर्नमेंट पेपर से लोन देयर यू हैव टू ब्रिंग इन द थियोरिटिकल पार्ट द ग्रिड आर एंड पैटर्न बाई नंबर ऑफ ज्योग्राफर्स हैव गिवेन दिस आइडिया नॉट वन टू बी नेम्ड नंबर ऑफ ज्योग्राफर्स and there are many modifications of the uh, grid iron pattern like the the circular pattern the radial pattern both are at the sector sectoral circle sectoral pattern there are all different variations of the grid iron pattern so when we have all these uh, models learned well then we can start writing on a smart city asked in geography paper 2 don't write it like a gs like general studies there you start with our old models and traditional approach then gradually shift to the smart cities of modi's fancies modi's ideas pradhan mantri okay so i think you have learned i have given you some some crucial hint about how to approach answer writing because i had promised you that after uh, oceanography we will talk about uh, the answer writing and what matters in civil services is what you write how much you know is uh, not so significant your knowledge is actually important i didn't say that your knowledge is not important as i told you earlier your knowledge is important but the most important part is not knowledge it is presentation and then time management comes for everything value your time and mai jab cricket khelta tha so i will never practice or even though i was a good batsman good player i could never score much in the some of the very crucial matches when i played for delhi university indo college i played two matches i couldn't deliver much just because i will not practice and i heavily rely on my talent and my aggression so many of you try to rely on your last minute powerful effort even if you are very powerful very talented but you have not practiced enough in the last minute लास्ट सेकेंड में कट थ्रोट कॉम्पिटिशन में यू आर लाइकली टू फेल बिकॉज देर इज अस्पर एंड यू फेल देर इज अ फ्रैक्शन एंड यू फेल माइन्यूटेस्ट ऑफ योर ऑफ योर वॉट ऑफ योर वॉट फैलिसीज माइन्यूटेस्ट ऑफ योर नॉन एलर्टनेस विल लीड टू योर फेलियर इसलिए देख लो कि टाइम मैनेजमेंट भी बहुत इंपॉर्टेंट है प्रैक्टिस इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट एंड देन अंडरस्टैंडिंग द ट्रू नेचर ऑफ ज्योग्राफी इज ऑल्सो इंपॉर्टेंट देन योर प्रेजेंटेशन इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट योर लैंग्वेज इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट नाउ सम पीपल आर बॉर्न विथ इट आई हैव सीन मेनी स्टूडेंट्स इन माई क्लास वे स्ट्रेट वे दे कम एंड देर द डे फर्स्ट दे स्टार्ट राइटिंग एंड आई अंडरस्टैंड ओ हो ही और शी हैज द पोटेंशियल but 90% of them have no potential because they come from different background and their background is really poor in terms of uh, not in terms of geography in terms of english language as well in terms of uh, uh, the flow the fluency in terms of the comprehension part the, their comprehension is not also good if they they will read savinder singh or say stroller but they can't understand what rupa med simple is trying to trying to say trying to convey rupa met simple hi nahi pad pate hain ek ek simple sa class 12 textbook hai they can understand savinder singh so they find their life easy so they start reading savinder singh and ncert some people cannot understand even ncert as well so that is where the challenge lies okay